Hello there, welcome to Talking Europe on France 24. Now, you might call it misinformation, spin, or more recently, fake news. It is the phenomenon that's become an obsession in the era of social media, and it is, for the French president, a virus which exposes our people to irrational fear and imaginary risks. The French Parliament currently looking to adopt new laws against fake news. Well, in the UK, Theresa May has announced a rapid response unit to combat fake news spread by foreign powers. Meanwhile, the EU is checking its options as leaders worry about the impact of misinformation on next year's European elections. So then, does fake news present a real danger or is it a bogeyman that could be used to reduce our civil liberties? We will be finding out more with the head of communications at the European Parliament, then debating the options with two MEPs. First, though, here is a best of, or perhaps worst of, some of the fake news stories that we've picked up on on France 24 in the last few months. Does the EU really want to ban French fries? The Istanbul Convention paves the way for same-sex marriage. Harems for refugees at the expense of the German taxpayer. The European Commission forces France to tinker with state railway workers' employment rights. Does Europe really want to ban kebabs? Is Europe helping you to fight cancer? I hear that often. The news is entirely fake, of course. Which is quite exaggerated. It's probably due to a misunderstanding. It's easy to check. Then, let's check. GM Salmon is not authorized in Europe. As it turns out, the commissioner actually never wrote this. Only the companies involved and their national governments can rule on the status of employees. Phosphates are in fact already banned by the European Union because of the risk of heart disease. This has nothing to do with the issue of homosexuality or gender. The map shown earlier is either ill-informed or deliberately misleading. This process should be thought as non-binding, a uh, friendly advice. This choice is made in Paris, not by the European Union. There has been more progress in the last three years than during the past 30 years. So Belgians can rest assured their national dish still had bright days ahead. The Agriculture Minister of Wallonia even welcomed the decision officially on Twitter. Well, watching that with me was Jelmy Duc, who is spokesman for the European Parliament. Thanks very much for being with us. Hello, thank you. Well, first question, Emmanuel Macron uh, knows uh, fake news pretty well. He believes it's going to be a problem for the 2019 uh, European elections. Uh, he's also pushing through a law against fake news. Do you agree that it's going to be a problem? Yeah, he's probably right. It's true also that in the European Parliament, inside the European Parliament, we all are concerned about which uh, effect uh, this uh, new phenomenon of uh, fake news uh, could uh, uh, make to, to, to the European elections, to the campaign and to the results, because it's obvious for everybody that there is a link between fake news from one side and, and then populism and anti-Europeism from the other. Uh, don't forget that uh, fake news about Europe are very easy because uh, people is less informed about the European uh, news about the European reality, about what Europe really does or doesn't, uh, than when uh, you go for national or for local uh, topics. Are you already monitoring fake news? Are you aware of any particular threats or any particular corners that fake news is coming from? Yeah, I mean, we're monitoring since uh, quite a long time. In fact, I would say since ever, because I remember very well when I arrived to the European Parliament many years ago, there were in Britain, for example, fake news about uh, putting statutes of Jacques Delors uh, in, the, in the roads in, in England to, to celebrate the fact that there was uh, regional funds uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 behind these uh, infrastructures. So this has been there since, uh, uh, since the beginning, I, I would say. Now it's more linked to the, to the hot topics, to the hot policies. It's most linked to immigration, for example. It's linked to security. It's linked to terrorism. It's linked to international relations. 
as we've mentioned, there is no EU legislation currently on fake news. There is none in the pipeline at the moment. Is that a worry for you? Well, it's very difficult to have uh, European laws on fake news because uh, fake news uh, uh, can be uh, attacked or can be, let's say, uh, in some way monitored with uh, different kinds uh, of uh, actions and not all these actions or not all these competencies are Europeans. Probably the member states are uh, better equipped and better prepared to, to uh, fight against uh, fake news and that's why the Commission has decided first to try to coordinate the effort at the national level and then at some point if necessary uh, to start a kind of second phase uh, with real European legislation. I'm sure a lot of people will be watching this thinking, is it really the role of politicians to tell us what is and isn't fake news? Apart from anything, a lot of things are open to interpretation. Um, there are accusations that democracy is in danger of being suppressed. I don't think that's the role for the politicians. I think that this is the role for media, first of all, uh, for professional media. And this is also uh, the role uh, for uh, um, fact checkers, for all these uh, uh, entities, these uh, all NGOs uh, which are uh, there to help uh, people to make the distinction between uh, uh, what's true and what's not. Of course, not for the politicians. All right, well, Jeremy Duke, uh, thank you very much for giving us your point of view. Uh, we're going to take a look at a news item right now that our team spotted in June of this year, which doesn't give the full picture on the story that it's reporting on. Here's Frédéric Simon with this week's Fact or Fake. Will the UK grant residency permits to violent criminals after Brexit because they have European citizenship? This is the suggestion in an article by the Daily Telegraph, which claims that the 4 million Europeans who currently reside in the UK will not be subject to international criminal checks after Brexit. The assertion is misleading, however, although it does contain bits of truth. On the one hand, it is true that the residency procedure will be simplified for European nationals after Brexit. This was one of the key demands of Brussels regarding the rights of citizens who already reside legally in Britain. But what the article does not say is that European nationals will also have to provide proof of their identity, show evidence of their residence in the UK and declare any serious criminal offences committed in the past. Applicants will be asked about their criminal history in the UK as well as overseas and will also be checked against the UK's National Police database. And in case of suspicion, the UK authorities will be entitled to ask for additional information from their European neighbours. At the end of the day, and contrary to claims by the Daily Telegraph, the whole procedure will allow authorities to make a detailed screening of all Europeans currently residing in Britain, and if necessary, to expel convicted criminals. Well, we are joined now by two MEPs uh, to debate how we ought to deal with fake news. Uh, with me in the studio are Virginie Rosier, French MEP from the Radicaux de Gauche movement uh, with the Socialist Group. Thanks for being with us. And uh, from Germany's Pirate Party, Julia Reda, uh, which is with the uh, Greens Group in the European Parliament. Hi there. Hello. Uh, we just heard our report there about an example of a misleading news story published in a British newspaper. As Frédéric Simon said, there were some elements of truth in the story, but there were other elements that were either not included or were untrue. Uh, I'll just briefly come to each of you. If you were a judge, You've got 48 hours, which is the idea under the new French law being proposed. You've got 48 hours to decide this is fake news or not. What, what do you do? Is that enough time? Well, indeed, it's, it's difficult because 48 hours is at the same time too long and too short. It's very short to assess uh, the truth of an information. And uh, at the same time, 48 hours, it, it's a long time for uh, uh, false or true news to spread around on the Internet. So. But there, it's a newspaper, so I think there is already a framework on, uh, about uh, the way newspapers should 
see They're through stories. They're great lines, aren't they? Because newspapers published on paper with specific rules, but there's also online platforms. Yulia, 48 hours to decide about fake news, a good idea? Well, I do think it's good that judges are supposed to be involved in this process at all and that the decisions would not be made by the platforms. But at the same time, I think it's foolish to think that you can eradicate lies from the Internet. I think the judges should decide whether what is published is illegal. Is it breaking laws on defamation or other uh, laws like this? And decide on the basis of that. Because uh, it is true that false information can negatively influence any kind of debate. Mm. But if you were to disqualify qualify every politician that lies from an election, you would probably not end up with a lot of candidates left. I think when we're looking at recent elections, a lot of fake news was disseminated on social media very quickly by internet users. So we're talking about individuals, but via big internet platforms like Facebook, Twitter, these are big, rich companies that have the means, surely one might think, to find ways to uh, find and root out fake news. Virginie Rosier, uh, internet platforms currently just don't seem to be accountable. Do you think well, that has to change? Well, they're not. Indeed, they're not accountable for uh, what is posted now by uh, users on, on, on them. And also they've got algorithm trying to uh, maximize their audience. And it, it might lead to spreading more and more the news that are the more vocal, but it, it also might be the more sensational and sometimes not true. So indeed, working on a, uh, a way to have these platforms being accountable in some way uh, for what is going on on them and maybe responding to a judge when mm. there is a decision uh, could, could be a way forward. But I think we have to draw this line between what is uh, published by editors, in, uh, which they stand accountable for by normal media. And indeed, when it's users, you don't know uh, who's publishing, why, and uh, with which support. It's a bit difficult. And in, the good part of uh, the French law is in, in uh, the trans transparency uh, dispositions, in which you have to uh, be uh, transparent on, on the way you sponsor and uh, who support the publication mm -hmm. and this is this is something which can be interesting okay so internet platforms uh, why shouldn't they sign up to similar kind of rules as a newspaper or a broadcaster like France 24 you know why should they be allowed to just have these uh, fake news put out on their platforms and be unaccountable well, I don't think it's one way or the other, that either you treat social media like news, which I don't think is possible because that would require them to control every single thing that users post before it goes online. Well, why shouldn't they impossible. do that, one might well, ask, if, if they're they putting did, out all sorts of if they terrorist did, images or incitations as well as fake news, for example? If platforms actually did that, if they controlled every single posting before it comes online, they would have to do that using automated algorithms. And these algorithms are not able to decide whether something is a defamation or not, whether something is terrorist propaganda or perhaps documentation of human rights abuses. Some platforms already use these automatic filters today and they make mistakes all the time. They delete legal content, sometimes even content documenting exactly the crimes that they're trying to fight. So, do we so just I think say... this is the wrong way. But we don't have to say therefore we don't do anything. Okay. Uh, for example, in the French elections, the lies that were spread about Macron before the election, uh, the most effective way of of dealing with them was exposing who spread them and that requires transparency the platforms need to be required by law to make it transparent uh, uh, how the information is spreading over the network and to give access to researchers who are looking into these networks of bots and other ways of uh, influencing elections but we come back to Virginie Rosier's point that 48 hours for example is a very very long amount of time when you're talking about fake news something can go viral within minutes yes exactly and I think this is the strength of this network research approach that if you're trying to fact check every lie that is uh, uh, spread about a politician before the elections you will not succeed it will be too slow but if you can show the person who spread this or uh, put it online for the first time is the same that spread five other things that were debunked as mm. fake news in the past that is really effective but that requires transparency about uh, how these platforms operate and at the moment actually social networks are shutting people out. They're not opening their platforms for researchers mm. and uh, to have the ability to analyze. 
Well, is that something you'd be interested in, uh, forcing yeah. the social networks to... Yes, uh, that's what I was by saying. Transparency uh, but is no one of the key... there's no incentive for them to do that, is there? So, uh, for the moment, they have no obligation and no interest, definitely, because uh, the, the secrecy about, about their algorithm, the way it works, it's, mm. it's, it's also a way to... Well, it's the... They say that's where they, their innovation uh, stands, and also it allows to uh, orient, uh, have an orientation of algorithms with some purposes you don't want to expose, like like maximizing the uh, having the maximum revenues from publicity, uh, in making people stay online the long, longest time possible. Mm -hmm. So this is not very moral purposes. It's only uh, uh, reaching the maximum profit, and, it's, and we know now it's the way they work. So they have no interest now in transparency but this is a, a democratic issue that and I think on mm. that we, we can agree that it would be uh, a very efficient way indeed to uh, to see who's behind a, new, a news and as I said when it's I, I wouldn't like to have this uh, um, fake news law apply to uh, newspapers because they are accountable for what they say and if they lie then they will be sued and condemned mm. and they they have huge risk in doing that but what's on platform you have to to be indeed more more transparent and also if uh, you know we, we had also you, you were mentioning lies about uh, Macron but we also had uh, scandals but real scandals with, with real journalists uh, during the campaign on the Fillon and the Penelope uh, scandal, and then we're talking there, about candidate there, it, it should, yeah, just to remind it, it our viewers it, you, and his wife. It shouldn't be jokes. shut down because you pretend it's fake news. Mm. Because when you are an investigative journalist, you have sources, and you don't want you necessarily maybe you don't want to expose your sources, mm. and it's your right as a journalist. So there, we have to be very careful that uh, the right of the an independent and free press is not uh, uh, threatened by the law. Mm. I oh. think yeah, the real underlying problem there is the advertisement business model of Facebook mm -hmm. because they have an interest in spreading news or advertisement to exactly those people who are most vulnerable to it. And this is really what is different from the past. So I think we need to urgently regulate advertisement on social media. But there are a lot of other proposals that are trying to deal with uh, misinformation as if it were illegal to lie. And I think that is completely the wrong approach. All right. Well, I think we're not going to solve fake news right here, but we have had some very interesting ideas from both of you. Thank you so much. Julia Reda from the Pirate Party of Germany and also Virginie Rosier from the Radico de Gauche in France. Thank you as well for watching. Stay tuned to France 24.